budgeting is customizable to however you feel is best for that particular budget. Hi everyone, it's Lizzie and welcome back to my channel. Before we get into the cash envelope stuffing part of the video, I wanted to talk to you guys about the term cash is king and specifically what that means for me and my husband. Now, cash is king, it does not mean that we worship cash like as a god we do not believe that cash or money is a god and we do not worship it but what it does mean to us is this it means that you are using your own money instead of other people's money i.e borrowing money and going into debt now getting into debt is not an option for us here we want to become financially free as i know many of you are as well so during a time of like a crisis that is not a time that you should be using debt now i do understand that there are some people that don't have an emergency fund or that don't use cash and have these sinking funds like we do here but it doesn't mean that you have to spend money outrageously and just go way too overboard okay so we have things in place in our household like our savings account and our cash envelopes that allow us to not go into debt or more debt because we do have um, one credit card left besides our house that is the only debt that we currently have at this point in time but we don't want to get into more debt we do not want to swipe our debit card to get supplies galore or we want to be really centered and not go overboard on different spending. So really we know the true meaning of what cash is over what a card or a, a debt is. Cash is so much more powerful and you have a lot more control if you have cash yourself and if you know how to, how to handle that. So that's really what a budget is and what this cash envelope method is for us. It's really to give us control and uh, not allow us to just panic and not know where our money is going. So I'm going to go ahead and get into my budget. So we're going to turn it to the table. That way you guys can see how we plan out our current paycheck and how we break things down. So let's go ahead and turn it to the table right now so you guys can follow along. All right guys, so this is what my paycheck budget looks like. I've already filled in what expenses I know are going to be paid from this paycheck and the way that I found that was from my bill tracker and this is a simple way for you to plan out what you have to set aside and what I mean by set aside is you're gonna leave it in your bank account at least that's what I do obviously do whatever works for you whatever makes sense for you if that means that you have a specific bank account that all of your bills get paid out of then transfer it to that so set it aside in there but this is how I have everything laid out based on the days that we know we are going to be getting paid so we're looking at the 13th and I literally just went down here and wrote in the expenses that I know I have to make sure that I set a portion of that aside so that we know we can cover that bill. We don't get any late charges and we're not under what the expected bill is for. So these are really the fixed expenses. I know what they are going to be and I have everything set up. Now there is one change and I am so thankful for it. That is our electric bill. So as you can see here, I'll zoom it in so that you guys can take a look. We don't have to pay anything for our electric bill and I was so surprised. We actually have a credit. So for March, we had a credit and that covered whatever the usage was. Then that credit also carries over into April and so we will have that that amount so I don't know what April's bill is gonna be um, we may have to pay a little something but that's really nice to allow us to be able to save extra for other things now because of this time of year and what has been going on in the world obviously we have to be mindful of where our money is going and so that's really why I wanted to say what I said in the beginning because I think it's super important for us to just take it easy have a plan and that's what this is all about. So let me just go ahead and fill in these numbers so that way you guys can kind of have an idea of what we are working with. And I love sharing 
our numbers. Yes, it is personal to us, but I think that by sharing true numbers really gives you as a viewer, as a possible subscriber, if you have not subscribed yet, but it gives you an idea on like how you can break things down. And especially during a time like this, for you not to freak out, for you not to withdraw all of your money because it is not necessary. Guys, it is not. You just have to take it one day at a time, breathe, and just make a plan for you specifically, you and your house. Hold. Okay, so I start with a beginning balance. So currently we had $6.35 in our account and this was left over from like gas, what we didn't use, all of that. And then our paycheck amount that we're breaking down is $938.84. So let me just grab my calculator so we can add up those two. So what I'm doing, I'm just adding the beginning balance plus the nine. 38.84. So this gives me a total income to work with of 945.19. And yes, we still are going to be giving a tithe. I believe in giving 10% of our income, giving it through a church. So we attend a church and we give 10%. So um, just looking at this, I know it's going to be roughly $94. So I'm just going to use that number. So what you do is you're going to take the paycheck amount, you're going to multiply it by 0 0.10 and that'll give you 10%. And now our offering, I know that on the around the 15th of the month, we have an automatic withdrawal that comes out and that's for $20. That's just something that we do um, to help with this ministry. And now let me go ahead and zoom you guys in so that you can track and figure out what these totals look like, right? So again, we are just looking at this bill tracker very nicely set up. I've already planned this ahead of time. That way I know what my numbers are when I do this budget. So I know that I've already set aside for ministry. So let me just put a check box there. And now we're looking at our mortgage. Mortgage, we set aside 368.31. And that will complete this mortgage payment for March. I didn't highlight anything yet because I had just filled this out not that long ago. So that's why you don't see anything highlighted. But typically I like to highlight when I know I've, you know, that pay will complete that payment. So having it highlighted, I'll do that a little bit later. So this would be highlighted and all of the other ones that I know is a completed payment. I will have that highlighted. Okay, HOA. Um, gets 1275 and I just put 1275 again keep it in my bank account so that I can make the full HOA payment which we pay that quarterly um and so I just like to have that that balance in the account that way once I know paid or excuse me <laughs> once I know the due date when I'm get to the due date I can just go ahead and click pay and then be done and then our spectrum so the internet is getting 17 50. The water bill, we're putting 21. Car insurance gets 42.56. All right, we did this already. Budgeting is customizable to however you feel is best for that particular budget. Okay, so no judgment for you, no judgment to me. Um, this is just what's working right now. Uh, life insurance is getting 1270. And then we have our registration that's due this month. So we've been setting money aside to pay that. And then what I did here, I just wrote in a total amount, $516.02. So I just added up all of this column and I really think that that would be helpful. So for those who are using um, this bill tracker or you've created your own bill tracker, um, just see about adding up your total expenses right down here on the column for that particular pay date. Because as you know, I like using this formula and let me get my post-it note. I like using a particular formula based on the amount that I get paid. So we've already figured out what the 10% is and that's $94, that's my tithe. But what is 80%? What does 80% look like? So 80% is of the total income. So we're gonna take the 945.19 and we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.8. This gives us a number to work with, a figure. And this is gonna be our guide. This is gonna be the goal that we wanna set for all of our spending out. So this includes all of your fixed expenses. This includes all of your variable, your cash envelopes, anything that you are paying out, anything that you're giving away pretty much. This is where um, I've seen a lot of growth with us, with our savings, with our debt payoff using this formula. And I know a lot of you have said that as well, using the 80, 20 or 70, 30, whatever your um, situation is, whatever your income looks like, you can use this. Um, and obviously you could tweak a few things and to, to possibly reach this goal. So this is a goal of ours for this paycheck to spend $756 on all of the expenses, all of the outgoing funds. So since we've already 
calculated what the total is of what these expenses are, let's figure out what we have remaining. So let me grab my calculator again. So we're taking the $756 and the 15 cents, and we're gonna subtract this total amount of all of these expenses, right? I added all of that up. We're gonna take that and we're gonna subtract 516.02, and this is gonna give us a remaining number. So $240.13 is what's left over. Now, obviously I know I have to set money aside for groceries and gas and all of the things, but this is a number that I know we, we plan on spending about that amount of money for those variable expenses, right? So that's why I like using the 80% rule to give me a guide. So I'm just gonna set this aside here. These are the other like variable expenses that I know um, we have to set money aside. Gas and I know tolls. So tolls, um, I have SunPass and then we've also received a toll by plate um, in the mail and it was for like $2.65. So adding those two up together and I had like a negative balance on my SunPass so that is not good but we're gonna cover it. It was by like 72 cents. So um, I add $10 to the Sun Pass. Um, so it's 1072 plus the, the toll by plate that we received that we have to pay 265. The total amount for tolls that we're put paying is $13.37. And then for gas, what we've been noticing actually, so um, we had been putting $140 aside for gas and we have had a big remaining balance left over. This $6.35 was for some unexpected small bill that we wanted to pay. So that's why this was so less, but typically the past few months, setting aside $140, we've had about $40 left over. So we're gonna try out $100 for this week and we'll see how it works and then we can adjust accordingly. So that is what that looks like. So now let's add up all of the expenses here. All right, so I'm getting 609.39, but I always like to double check. So let me just go ahead and add this up again. All right, 609.39 is the total of these expenses. So now let's figure out what we have left over, taking our income and subtracting all of these things. So 945, 19 minus 104. What is this? That's wrong. Did I? Guys, I need help. <laughs> Somebody probably saw that. We got it. All right. Minus 114 minus 609, 39. Okay. So let's see what we have left over to break it down for the catch envelopes. So as we mentioned, we have 756.15 that we've already figured out is 80%. This is the goal of what we wanna pay out. So 756.15 minus the 609.39, which is this total right here, total expenses. This is giving us $146.76. And then I'm also gonna subtract that $20. Um, I know it's for giving, but because we have it set up that is a recurring debit from our account, I just wanna include that. So this is giving me $126.76. So based on what we have in our pantry and everything, we have decided that we are going to put $55 aside for grocery. I put a little star here because I'm not actually withdrawing this money because we've already gone to the store because of everything that's been going on. I didn't have a chance to physically go to the bank and withdraw that money. Um, but we did go to the store and got what was left because we were like out of toilet paper and there's no toilet paper. I couldn't get the toilet paper. So I had to order toilet paper on Grove Collaborative because they did have some when I checked. So um, check out Grove Collaborative if you are needing toilet paper where you are at. I don't know if at the time of filming this and watching this, you guys are able to get it, but just FYI. And then, yeah, so that's what that's why I had a little star there to let you guys know that I didn't, I'm not actually gonna withdraw that money. It's already been paid out, paid for, right? Let me subtract that. So now I know that I am left with $71.76 that we can withdraw money for. And so because of, you know, situations, right, we want to be smart with how we are placing the money. We still want to continue on with the different goals that we have 
in place. So one of them being Christmas. Christmas is still gonna come. This whole chaotic time will pass. This too shall pass, guys. And if it takes me and a bunch of other people on YouTube and all of the places, please just stay calm, all right? During this time, just stay calm. I, I, I know I'm gonna repeat that probably a few more times. <sighs> but it just needs to be said. Okay, so car maintenance based on like what the numbers look like. Let me take a look at what we have to break down. Give me one moment. Oh, all right, let me correct myself. We did spend 75, not 55. This is a normal $75, but we are not withdrawing that from the account because we did go to the store and it was, I just looked at the receipt. It was 75, not 55, sorry. All right, so 5176 is what we're gonna break down. So one of them is car maintenance. Car maintenance is gonna get $14. Christmas is gonna get that usual $22. And then um, we have to uh, get food for our dogs. Um, and it seems like we've been getting this every week, but I just wanna make sure that we have enough, um, especially now. Let's see if we can find their food um, because they have the fresh pet from Walmart and we'll just see if they even have that um, in stock. So if we take uh, 14 minus 22 minus the 15, all right, we're good. So let's add up all of these. 75 plus 14 plus 22 plus 15. So that gives us that 126 which is awesome. And now let's figure out what the cash denominations we are going to need um, when I go to the bank in just a bit. I'm gonna go, it's nine o'clock, um, so I'm gonna go in just a, a little bit to the store, or to the store, oh my gosh, to uh, the bank. We're gonna withdraw $14, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Christmas is getting 20, 21, 22. And then pet is gonna get 10 and a five. So we're only withdrawing 120, two tens, one five, and six ones. I may end up going to the ATM, and I know that the ATM that I go to does not give out tens, so I'll probably get a bunch of fives, which is okay. So now the remaining, we're gonna do the 221.80, which is right up here, 221.80, and we're gonna subtract the 126. So this leaves us with a remaining balance of $95.80. Now, what are we gonna do with this remaining money? This is what we are gonna be doing with that remaining money. That's just gonna stay in our account, okay? That's gonna stay in our checking account. At this moment, um, just with everything that has been happening, we just, it seems like very unpredictable. But let me just share a few more thoughts with you before I get into stuffing my cash envelopes. So having money set aside in a savings account, so in the bank or in my cash envelopes, really gives me that visualization of, okay, I'm looking at my bank account, I'm looking at the, the envelopes that I have, so I know that I have that amount of money to spend on whatever I need it for. And having that cash in my wallet, for example, or in my savings account, really gives me a sense of control, that I am in control of my money and no one else is, right? I am not at the mercy of a financial institution to tell me am I improved for X amount of dollars because I don't need to borrow for those things. Now, again, I do understand that there are some people that have to resort to debt in order to get by, but that's where a budget comes into place and why a cash budget specifically is so important for me is because you're able to write down your budget and see how much money you have, your income, to pay for these other items, i.e. your expenses or cash envelopes. And if you see that that total is your negative, right? Your, your outgoing is more than your incoming, then something needs to change. And so having things written down on paper or having it on a spreadsheet or having something written where you know where your money is going, it's really gonna change the way that you handle your finances, I promise you. And the cash envelope method has completely changed our lives as I know it will if you just try it out. So again, especially during a crisis, I think that cash is king and it really will give you that peace that you need and you don't have to worry about anything. Now, that was my little rant. Let's get back into the cash stuffing portion of this video. So let me turn it back to the desk, show you the worksheet and we are gonna stuff these envelopes. So I have my envelopes 
in this cash envelope wallet and I'm also stuffing cash envelopes from this cash envelope pouch. And all of the this stuff is linked in the description box if you're wanting to get it yourself. But let me get out the cash. And we're just gonna get to stuffing the cash envelopes. So as I had mentioned right over here, I knew that the ATM doesn't give out $10 bills, but it does give out five. So I had to get fives instead. So we have our one $20 bill. And for this, it would be one, two, three, four, five, five dollar bills. So that's what I had to withdraw. One, two, three, four, five, five dollar bills is what I got. And then we got our singles. One, two, three, four, five, six singles. So very minimal. Um, I don't withdraw the tithe any longer that I now give electronically. So it makes it a lot easier uh, for me to like manage the finances and manage the cash. So now let's stuff the envelopes that need to be stuffed. So as I mentioned, we are not taking out the cash for this grocery that's already been taken care of, but we will, oh actually, the only one that we're stuffing is for pet. Let's go to the pet envelope is right here and that is getting um, $15 so we'll get three fives so I write it on here that we added $15 so now I have 15 in my pet envelope setting that aside and then now I'm gonna grab these envelopes here so the envelopes that I am currently using, and I kind of switched things up just a bit. We did have to go and get some parts again, so we used the money that was in here, but that's what it's for. So that's always a good thing when we have the money. What am I doing? 14, 14, not 15, dear Lord, 14. All right, so that gets the two fives, and one, two, three, four. All right, so slowly building this one back up again. And then we have our Christmas envelope. So I switched it back to this laminated one um, just because it's more durable than the, um, the paper one that I was using. And it's, uh, it's really pretty. So this is the last one and that's getting $22. So currently we have $222. So now we have $244. Let me just organize this. All right, and let me just show you um, the other envelopes that I do have in this pouch just for you to see. So um, I switched back to this date night um, envelope instead of the one that I was using in my wallet here, um, just because we don't, we don't need this in my wallet all the time and we'll just take it when we are going on a date night. So we have this one, we have our gifts, envelope um, this is used for birthdays pretty much for birthdays and like other events that we may be invited to that we have to bring a gift so we'll slowly be building in here right now we did use it for my for my birthday um, and then also what we're doing for my husband's birthday so some of the funds in here had been used um, so that's what that one is. This vacation envelope is being used for obviously vacations, but um, we are no longer uh, Disney pass holders. So the money that we typically would have been putting towards Disney, we are wanting to save to do like local uh, sightseeing and seeing, discovering Florida more than what we have, which we really haven't like been around Florida. So uh, the last little trip that we did was for my birthday. We went to St. Augustine and we had the best time. It was so beautiful. I definitely want to go back again. Uh, but obviously once all of this uh, sickness and stuff kind of dies out, hopefully it will be done soon. So that's what we use this vacation envelope for for saving for different trips and when we have family coming over that's what we use those for and then let me just take you on to show you my my wallet and show you what envelopes are in here currently the first one is my eating out and i have this in alphabetical order so eating out is one our grocery envelope is the most used envelope in here then we have our home this is for like cleaning products. This is for um, anything for the home, like decor. If we want to get decor, that is what this is for. 
Then our medical envelope, this is for all of our co-pays that we've had uh, to deal with. Our pets, so anything for our dogs, their food, if we wanna buy them like a little treat, that's what that one is used for. Spending, this is for my personal spending. So anytime when I want to like buy just anything from, for me, whether it be clothes or makeup, just anything that is really not a need, that is what I use this for. My husband has his own little thing, but we have not been contributing too much to this because we are having other goals and that's just a personal decision of ours. And then the last envelope is for toiletries and obviously it's for any um, any products that we need for our you know, hygiene and stuff. And then this last one is for the month of March. So it's titled March and it's because I'm a part of the Budget Mom Savings Challenge and it's to save all the $1 bills that we end up coming across with. Now, some of you may be asking, well, Lizzie, you withdrew like a whole bunch of ones or a whole bunch, we withdrew six, but what this is for is anything like if I'm getting changed back, anything like that for purchases, I will put the $1 bill in this envelope and I don't really come across with a lot of ones for some reason. I don't know why, but anytime when I do, I will put it in there and it will just be an added savings. So that is what my budget looks like, what my wallet and envelopes looks like. So I really hope that this encouraged you to really take it easy, take it one day at a time, don't be upset or be discouraged if you are not able to save or pay off as much debt as you wanted to. It is okay, um, especially during a time like this, the season that we are in. You do have to plan for like the future and really um, be mindful of your spending. Don't overspend. Um, I think now is the time that we should be like saving for um, an emergency, really. So that's why we've decided to the leftover funds, we're just gonna leave it in our checking account. We're not gonna move it to the savings because we want like immediate access to it and the savings account that we have is an online bank and it'll take a few days for us to receive that money in our account. So in case we have to buy something right away, we just want immediate access to that. So that's why we're, we've just decided for this particular pay, that difference is just gonna be left in our account as like that cushion. Um, just as a, a, a security net, right? So that is everything for this video. I really hope that this has encouraged you that you, you know, get on a written budget and really plan for your future. But that is everything. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in a brand new video. Bye guys.